Craig Wiggins as a Senior Vice President of Powertrain at Continental Automotive. Of course, we're at the MBS conference. You're a speaker. What you speaking about? Well, first of all, thanks for having me here today, John. You're welcome. What did I speak about? Well, electrification. And we're talking about is electrification at the tipping point? And as you know, we in Continental have a broad-based technology portfolio. So we do everything from 12-volt start-stop systems and electrification all the way up to through 48-volt, also to high-voltage drive lines. But today we wanted to talk about charging, because that's another area that's really important as we see EVs coming into play. So out there today, there's several different charging technologies. There's several different charging connectors. Some vehicles take some charging stations, some not and you know that it's not so easy, it's a little bit confusing for the general population. So what I talked about today was the overall charging infrastructure that we have and how it needs to be improved by public and private partnershiping, but also um, a new technology that we have which is based on what we call the all charge system. Which it, means what? Well, it essentially, a normal electric vehicle has an onboard charger and we remove the onboard charger from the electric vehicle and we actually use the electric motor to run the AC current through, the regular AC to DC inverter on the vehicle itself, and then we add a DC to DC converter. What this basically does is simplify the charging process on board, and it allows uh, the system to use all kinds of either AC or DC, low voltage to high voltage to fast charging, uh, so it really becomes a universal way you can plug into basically any infrastructure that we have today. We still have connector issues, but yes. uh, the rest is all taken care of by the vehicle. Does this lower the cost of an electric car? It depends on, well, it, it also combines some of the infrastructure, so it depends on what the OEM wants. It certainly gives an option to uh, provide a lower cost potentially. It depends on how much power they want to put through the vehicle, but it certainly gives the ability uh, to universally accept anything that's coming into the vehicle, even to the future standards that we see uh, coming into play. Very interesting. So are we at a tipping point with electrification? And by electrification, I don't mean hybrid stop start and yeah, like 48 full, volt, full I mean EVs. battery electric vehicle. Well, we see right now there's about 1% of the global population that's running a full electric vehicle. We see a 10% in 2025. That's a huge jump which in a short a amount of time. Jump, which is a relatively huge jump. It is not you know, dominant percentage or market share, but we see that definitely coming into play. And what we've seen also is in the early 2020s or 2025 or so, we've heard today, uh, full solid state batteries would come into play. And that gives you, you know, the longer range promise plus the faster recharge promise. So tipping point, I don't know if we would say that, but I think definitely we see the escalation and acceleration of EVs. When you talk to OEMs, especially in Europe, they do see that tipping point. I guess the question would be, is the public ready for that? And that's why we wanted to focus on the consumer aspect, because you know it can be frustrating you pull into a charging station and what they have doesn't fit your pump or your uh, interface. So that's the, the issue that we tried to tackle. We think the consumers are ready once they have, you know, basically we always talk about the range anxiety. Once you get the battery through that range, and we talk about time anxiety because not only it's range, but if you find a charging station, then you have to wait for it to recharge. Mm -hmm. Once we get through those range and time uh, barriers, I think it'll be accepted just like everything else. Somebody was telling me that if you want to have a, a fast charging station with 12 outlets, mm -hmm. six pods as it were, pumps as it were, right. it takes an enormous amount of electricity. An enormous amount of electricity, that's right. That's why we think there's there's opportunity for many different types of charging. We're also working on inductive charging, so you drive over a, a pad in your house, in your garage, and very simple, very convenient. And then you can charge, not at a, low, a lower rate than, of course, a fast charging, but it allows that um, very convenient, simple way that maybe you then only have to do a fast charging when you leave town or go somewhere else or once or twice a week or something like that, which is uh, much more convenient. So we think there's room for different levels of this charging capability and infrastructure. The reason I'm asking about public acceptance is I'm, I'm amazed that even right now there's so much confusion over hybrids and especially yes. plug-ins yes. and then battery electrics and then you need consumer behavior changes. Something as simple as willing to plug in every single day when you get home or the like. And right. I, have you looked at that kind of 
uh, level of consumer acceptance. It's, it's changing the way that they actually use their vehicle. Right, it is changing the way. And that's why we think inductive coupling has a pretty strong positive. Because then the consumer doesn't have to do anything differently. Mm -hmm. They just drive in and park at night. They would still have to recharge or refill when they go for longer distances, but that's something that we do today, really, from a pump perspective. Very much is. And people don't care about technologies of batteries or whatever, as long as it's relatively straightforward and easy to use. And I think as we begin to replicate or very, come very close, at least, to the gas station experience, I think then truly it will become quite normal for people to have EVs. And so you're saying early 2021, 20, 2021, 2022, this will start to come in by 2025. 2025, we were saying 10% really um, global electrified vehicles, electric vehicles. Well, as you know, in the automotive industry, that's just a blink of an eye it's, away. It's not that far away, really. But we think battery technology, there's a lot of people, a lot of very intelligent people working on these breakthrough technologies. And that's why in that early 2023, five, uh, we think there'll be some significant changes in battery and that will help enable EVs. Craig Wiggins, thanks so much for stopping by. Very yeah, exciting pleasure. stuff that's happening with electrification. Thank you very much, John. Pleasure to be here. The way we drive is transforming with new automated capabilities through innovative solutions like radar sensor technologies for increased vehicle safety. Hella is leading the way in shaping the future of mobility.